Prime Minister then subsequently uh, visited uh, the venue of the G20 summit, uh, where he attended uh, the uh, inaugural ceremony uh, with the other leaders. And thereafter, he attended the first session uh, on the global economy and global health. Um, in his intervention uh, at this uh, uh, first event uh, of the G20, the Prime Minister highlighted India's contribution in the fight against the pandemic. He, he mentioned India's medical supply to over 150 countries. Uh, he uh, spoke about uh, our uh, vision of uh, One Earth, One Health, which is essentially uh, the need for a collaborative approach uh, uh, in the international domain uh, in the fight against the corona pandemic. Uh, I'm talking about collaboration from R&D, research, uh, uh, to collaboration in actually, uh, you know, combating pandemics, uh, collaboration across the board in, uh, you know, developing uh, mechanisms that can cope with future pandemics and future global health issues. Uh, so the concept of One Earth, One Health, I think, is uh, something that uh, was uh, uh, enunciated by the Prime Minister, well received by uh, G20 leaders, because this is something that I think is uh, uh, very, very important to the international community, and we are looking for comprehensive global solutions that can address issues uh, that also deal with uh, problems of uh, inequity, uh, problems that developing country, countries face, and this is, again, uh, another uh, approach towards the overall concept of the global common good uh, that the Prime Minister has spoken of on a number of occasions. Um, Prime Minister stressed uh, on the need for resilient global supply chains. Uh, mentioned also India's bold economic reforms, uh, the lowering of the cost of doing business with India. Uh, he spoke about uh, innovation in India, uh, the efforts at, uh, um, at developing uh, a, a sort of a culture of innovation. Um, um, he invited the G20 countries uh, to make India their partner in economic recovery and supply chain diversification. Um, it's, uh, I think, in some senses, uh, the Prime Minister also brought out the fact that uh, despite the challenges of uh, the pandemic, uh, India uh, continued to be a trusted partner in the context of uh, reliable supply chains. Uh, he spoke about the IT sector, the BPOs, uh, where uh, um, we did not allow the pandemic to come in the way of the uh, uh, of our contribution in the overall chain uh, in, in the global processes. Um, the Prime Minister expressed satisfaction over uh, the G20's decision uh, to uh, come up with a 15 percent minimum corporate tax to make uh, the global uh, financial architecture uh, more just and fair. Uh, you are aware of the 15 percent minimum corporate tax which ensures that uh, uh, companies don't go to the you know, lowest possible tax haven in order to uh, minimize their tax burden and that the large multinational corporations uh, pay their share of taxes uh, um, to uh, countries that they are located in. Um, here, uh, I think it was also pertinent to mention that it was in 2014 that the Prime Minister had first proposed this uh, idea of a, a minimum corporate tax uh, in order to prevent uh, to, in some, to some extent, uh, evasion of uh, taxes or, uh, you know, the concept. Uh, 2014, uh, the G20 summit, was it? Uh, was that? Uh, the 2014 G20 summit is when the Prime Minister spoke about this. Uh, he first mentioned the concept. So today there is satisfaction over the fact that the G20 has actually adopted this. This has become a global norm, and, and I think this is a very important step in ensuring uh, more rationalized uh, global tax structures and better cooperation uh, in the international domain when it comes to issues like tax evasion, uh, you know, money laundering, uh, uh, corruption, so on and so forth, uh, some of the issues that the G20 is very, very um, uh, currently dealing with. Um, uh, Prime Minister conveyed that India uh, has not only uh, vaccinated uh, uh, over a billion of our citizens, but more important is that we are ready to produce over 5 billion vaccine doses by uh, the end of next year. Uh, this obviously will be available uh, not only for our citizens, but the rest of the world. 
uh, and uh, that uh, this is our own uh, contribution to uh, reducing, um, as I mentioned, vaccine inequities, uh, especially in the developing world. Um, obviously, uh, we also uh, believe that uh, the WHO's uh, uh, approval, uh, the emergency use authorization uh, for co-vaccine, our indigenous vaccine pending with them, would facilitate this process of uh, uh, our uh, assisting other countries. Uh, so there was uh, emphasis on vaccine research, uh, manufacturing, and I mentioned innovation also. Uh, we have obviously invested uh, a fair amount in that effort in order to make it available for our citizens and citizens uh, uh, all across the world. Um, the Prime Minister spoke about facilitating international travel. I did mention this yesterday, uh, but he mentioned it he, in, his, uh, in his statement uh, at the G20 today. Uh, he talked about uh, the uh, mechanism of uh, mutual recognition of vaccine certification as a means of achieving this. Uh, tomorrow, uh, as you are aware, there are two more sessions of the G20 uh, on climate change and environment uh, and uh, a working lunch on sustainable development. In addition, the Prime Minister will also attend a side event hosted by President of the United States, uh, His Excellency Mr. Joe Biden, on supply chain resilience. He will also hold uh, other bilateral meetings on the sidelines of the G20 summit. Uh, thereafter, the Prime Minister will depart uh, for Glasgow, where he will, he will attend uh, the uh, COP26 uh, summit.